Welcome to PSC's Wednesday workshop series number two. I am Whitney, PSC's Future Students Coordinator. And today's session is going to be around your guide to creative or careers in the creative industries. So today we are joined by Daniel Boker-Smith, who is our Dean of Photography Studies, you know, pretty much set up the course to what it is today and knows how to get you into the industry. And Celine, Serena LaRossi, who is our Bachelor First Year Coordinator and also an amazing photographer. So um, we're doing these Wednesday workshops fortnightly and um, through the link, which I'm sure you found us today, um, we have all of the sessions that are coming up and they're just, you know, small community chats, um, ways for you to feel more connected to us at PSC and to get some of your questions answered. Um, so if you don't know, PSC is one of Australia's leading photography schools. We have been around for 45 years, if not more. We've been around for a fair while. We've gone through um, you know, the film era into digital photography and, um, you know, our courses are all around image making and everyone that you meet at the college is passionate about photography. I studied there. Um, I did the Bachelor of Photography a few years back. So I'm always up for a chat about my experiences at PSC and even studying elsewhere if you want to know the real goss. Um, so I think we'll get started with today's session. Dan, would you mind introducing yourself? Uh, yeah, so I'm Daniel Becker-Smith. I'm the um, Dean of Studies at the college. Uh, and so I look after all of the programs from the Cert 4 right through to the Master's program, which also includes the Diploma and the Bachelor of Photography. Um, I guess in terms of um, who I am, um, I am a photographer, um, but also work a lot in uh, the kind of wider industry of photography in terms of writing about photography and uh, curating. So uh, curating an exhibition coming up in February for the Photo 2021 Festival in Melbourne. So there's a big photography festival starting in Melbourne. Um, it was supposed to be this year, but it's been delayed for a while. So it's coming up in February, I think next year. So curating a show for the Monash Gallery of Art uh, for that festival. Uh, and also I do a lot of writing and thinking about photography uh, and write for a number of publications, uh, both in Australia, um, in Asia and in America and the UK as well. So I guess my practice is sort of um, taking photographs, um, but as, uh, as the kind of um, Dean of the college, uh, getting time to go out and take pictures is uh, few and far between these days. Uh, especially at the moment. And so a lot of my practice also is about kind of writing about photography and thinking about contemporary photography, particularly around photo books and photo book publishing as well. So I'm very interested in photography books and I've um, got a bit of an addiction, I'll be happy to admit. Um, and yeah, so I think, um, yeah, I've been at the college now since 2013, I think it is. Um, so yeah, so I guess in terms of the students that are coming in, um, Serena and myself will probably be the one that you'll be interviewed by, one or the other of us. Um, and so, yeah, in that kind of interview, that's where we kind of get to really kind of spend half an hour or so talking to you about your photography and about your background and about your plans for the future. And I, I think, Holly, we just spoke a few moments ago. So, Holly, how was your interview? You can tell us. Um, it was good, yeah. <laughs> there you go there's a one one thumbs up anyway one thumbs up she yeah. hasn't heard the outcome yet though that's so. right <laughs> yeah. we'll talk soon holly <laughs> and thanks for that dan and um serena would you mind giving us a little bit of an introduction about yourself um, yeah, so um, I, I see myself as doing two things. One, I'm an educator, I'm a teacher, and I really love what I do. I love teaching, and I love teaching about photography and visual culture. Um, but the second, I mean, not second thing, but, you know, the other thing that I do is that I, I, I'm an artist, and I've been exhibiting for a long time. Um, 
you know, over the years, I, I work with photography and I work with other mediums as well. Um, and I love that I can combine the two and they come together beautifully and I can speak to my experience and help the students, you know, in, in many different ways to develop their, their ideas and their work. Um, I'm also a coordinator of first year, which I really love doing too, where, you know, that, that kind of really tricky year of transition from maybe secondary school through to um, tertiary study is something that we, um, you know, myself and, and the teachers who are on the first year teaching uh, team, you know, we kind of were very experienced at, um, at, at kind of nurturing the students through that, that, that transition year into the second and third years of the courses of the course. So, um, yeah, I love what I do and that's why I'm still here after many years. <laughs> I mean, Serena was one of my first year teachers and I think maybe even a bit in the second year, I can't remember, but it's so valuable having, you know, teachers that know the real, like they're the real deal. They have experience in the industry, but then they're also really good teachers as well. So it's, um, yeah, a really good experience. I can Thank vouch you, for them. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. Um, now let's... I guess we'll start the session by how our courses at PSC prepare you for, you know, a real career in the photography industry. It's not really good enough just to teach you the practical skills about photography. Um, you know, like we've mentioned, our teachers are from the industry and the course is really set up. Um, with that in mind. It's made for industry by people in the industry. Um, so Dan, where do you want to get started? <laughs> There's so many topics to cover. Yeah, well, I guess, I guess the first thing really is to, I guess what we'll do is we'll talk a bit about what we do kind of in the course. And then the next thing really is to talk about what we do kind of outside of the course. So I think there's two separate things there. And I think that's one of the key kind of defining features, I think, of the college as well, is that it's not just a place that you come to kind of do the course uh, uh, and then kind of go off home. Um, it is really a community of photography. And as you've said, Whitney, you know, um, everybody who's there is a photographer, all the staff who are teaching on the courses are photographers. There's very few staff we have teaching at the college that are five days a week. Um, most staff we have are practicing photographers, artists, photojournalists, curators, writers, whatever they might be, uh, fashion photographers, whatever. And they spend um, a number of days a week doing that and then a number of days a week at the college as well. And I think that's a really kind of key defining feature of, of PSC. Uh, and then I guess, like I said, the, the notion of what we do in the course is one thing and that really does set people up for kind of building a career. But then it's the wider kind of picture as well that we provide at the college, which is to do with uh, industry connections through the staff, but also the history of the college and the fact that lots of our graduates are out there kind of working. And uh, uh, weekly we hear about um, a graduate who's got a job somewhere and then we sort of dig, 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 dig a bit deeper and realize that the person who's employed them actually is also a graduate of the college and that's why they've got the job from PSC in, in the first place. So I think that's always kind of interesting, but then also the wider community at the college of things that are happening outside of the course. So visiting speakers, workshops, all those things. So I'll cover a few of those things as well. So I guess the first place to start really is the, the mentor and business um, kind of classes and the, the kind of photojournalistic classes we have in, in the course, in the bachelor. So in the second year, we have a photojournalism class, photojournalism and multimedia. And that's where you, the first real kind of opportunity in the course to work with kind of external briefs and external clients. And so we have a number of practicing photojournalists that come in uh, who work for The Age, who work for uh, international publications, who work for the Saturday paper, the monthly, uh, Frankie magazine. So that kind of editorial photojournalistic kind of world. Um, and that's the staff that teach the, the class, but also the visiting people who are coming in. And so those visitors kind of set briefs and set real world briefs um, and give you real world feedback in terms of the shooting that you're kind of doing and the projects that you're making. So 
already in the second year, you're getting that kind of real world experience and hearing from people who are doing that on a day to day, uh, week by week basis. And so you start to kind of um, create a bit of an understanding about how those kind of industries work, because we're always, when we're on the outside of something, we're always a bit kind of uh, a bit in awe of how it all works. And I think that kind of demystifying that really is a kind of key kind of part of what we try to do. And then in the third year, we have a, uh, a number of different subjects, uh, units in the course that help you start to build your kind of network. So we have a mentor class, which is where you have an external mentor from the industry within which you want to work. So in the third year, you specialize in either commercial photojournalism or art, and then you get a mentor from that particular industry and you work with them for six months. And often that mentor kind of relationship continues on past the six months for the year of the third year, and then usually continues on afterwards as well. And, you know, once you spent six months building up a kind of friendship with someone and, and you kind of getting feedback on your work and the ideas that you're working on, um, then, then that kind of relationship continues. So that's a big part of it. Uh, and then there's a, a, an entrepreneurship kind of business class, which is really about how do you set up a business as a freelance photographer? As we know these days, most photographers are freelance um, or working in multiple kind of roles at the same time. Um, and so that class really kind of sets you up for that. So we talk, talk a lot about building networks. We talk a lot about how do you run an actual business where you're the employee um, and talk a lot about how to kind of start to build up those professional networks as well. Because um, in photography, as with most kind of creative industries, you know, it's really about having those networks and maintaining those relationships and, and starting, to, starting out on that journey of, of creating those networks. Um, and like any kind of creative practice, like being an actor or a musician or a, a, a sports person, whatever it might be, it's just one of those things that you just have to do on a daily basis. And part of the career of being a photographer is also doing all that stuff behind the scenes of, you know, being a business person and being an entrepreneur and being a freelancer, as well as having the kind of photography skills. It's also about having all those other kind of skills too. Um, yeah. So I guess that's what we do kind of within the course. And I guess, Maybe um, Serena can talk a little bit about the uh, jobs register, which is something that, again, sits outside of the course, but certainly is part of the kind of community and the kind of offering we have at the college. Yes, yeah, sure. Okay, so um, what, what I've got up here is um, one of our students, um, he's now, uh, I think, taking a break from the course, but he was um, a student at, at PSC um, up until this year, this year, Dan, yep. Um, this is Farley Webb's um, website page. Um, I want to, uh, I'll, I'll keep that up as I talk, but basically what we have at the college is a jobs re register. So when you become a student, you can um, meet with one of our staff members and fill out a form and basically indicate on that form um, your availability, um, any jobs that you've, you've previously done, how far you're willing to travel, if you have a car, and, um, and, you know, uh, fill out the form, give it to, to Jill, who's our staff member who looks after the job register. And basically people contact, external pe people co contact PSC all the time to, to ask whether, I guess, um, we have any students who can, um, you know, photograph events or, um, can assist on shoots, things like that. And as Dan said earlier, you know, because we've got a lot of, um, you know, graduates out there, people who went through PSC who are working professionally, often they come back to us and say, hey, have you got a second or third year student or sometimes even first year to, um, to, do, to assist me on this job? The kinds of jobs that, um, that the students have done in the past are things like a commercial shoot, you know, shooting a car, say, for, at, at Luna Park. These are a list of things that, that, we're, that act, are actual jobs that people have done. Um, photographing for Daryl Lee chocolates, um, industrial photography at working sites, real estate, weddings, birthdays, social media events, um, marathons, assisting in studio, videographer assistants uh, for um, events, and then lots of non not for profit events like cystic fibrosis charity events and a special kids charity event. Um, so once we connect the student with the uh, client, then it's completely up to them 
um, to work with the client um, and, and liaise with them. Um, the reason I uh, show you Farley's uh, website is because he was one of these students in first year who put his hand up and was very proactive and wanted to get work and very um, driven and, and, and committed, dedicated. So he started getting work right from first year. And in first year, um, he worked, uh, he did uh, things like, you know, photographing a Christmas party for Mattel um, Corporation. And he did that two years in a row. He got a few weddings and, and then from those weddings, he got referrals to other weddings and graduation ceremonies, for example. He also assisted one of our ex-students for her commercial shoots. Um, and that's still ongoing now. So he, even though he, um, he did it in first year, he's still helping out, um, helping um, Cass out. And also just uh, photographing real estate and displaying homes. So what you can see from there um, is that he's prepared to do anything really. And, and really, this is a quote from him. He sent this to me. Um, the most important thing about my experience with the job register is that it gave me the chance to get experience in a lower pressure environment, which has helped me in a professional capacity. Um, also, it's been good for contact building and just getting more comfortable in the industry. Um, he would definitely recommend that people get on board and put their hand up for as much work as possible. The only way to find what you like in this field is to try everything. And I guess like if you look at his website, um, he's, he's got um, with his events page, um, he's got some weddings that he's shot, examples of, uh, you know, family gatherings, um, you know, maybe family portraits, um, and then uh, also, I don't know what this is, but it's Queens of the Pub. <laughs> mm -hmm. So again, um, event photography, um, you know, anything that will build his, this is the Mattel Christmas party, will build his, you know, build his um, experience, you know, uh, uh, that can help him with his skill development. And also from what I see here, working with people, which is a pretty important thing, um, as well as he's got his own um, personal work on this website that you can see, uh, personal projects that he's working on and the, the skaters project, I imagine is a personal project as well. So yeah, that's my little spiel and i do i do recall farley also you know being because he's one of those people that was um saying yes to everything um through the job register also he you know was so busy that sometimes he'd text me you know in the second year class and say oh sorry i'm going to be late for class because i'm shooting in queensland and I just arrived back or something you know <laughs> that sort of stuff <laughs> so um you know it was really a case of just kind of saying yes to everything and and through that he's built a whole range of networks that those people now aren't going back to the job register anymore. They're just going directly to him, you know? And so we do have also in there um, some guidance in that around um, pay scales and how to kind of um, invoice yeah. people and all those things. So we do help you with that sort of stuff as well. Um, and we do, you know, we do tell the people that are calling up that, you know, it's not a freebie that they have to pay that because often people who are, who are contacting the college are looking for someone cheaper because they're looking for a student, right? But we also do help you to kind of negotiate that a bit as well and make sure that you're getting paid your proper kind of dues. Um, but also there's, um, as Serena said, some of the events are charity events that they're looking for someone who will do it for free. And some of those are really, you know, valid kind of charities that we kind of really support as well. So we want, we want students to go out and have that experience as well. So, um, yeah. Hmm. Thanks, Serena. No worries. Um, I guess in terms of, shall I just carry on, Whitney? Yeah, I think so. I guess in terms of the other connections, I guess uh, I'm, I'm going to go through a few different kind of um, names of things and links and things. I've got some websites that I can kind of show you. But I guess one of the key things really is if I just go to my to share. Yes. Um, 
Sorry. Everyone always has a thinking face when they go to share the screen. <laughs> <laughs> and there's a project for you, Whitney. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Already started it, Serena. <laughs> um, so, for example, um, we have a really strong connection with the... Can you see that screen? Yeah. The yeah. AFPP, so the Australian Institute of Professional Photography. Um, so I can see Thomas is quickly writing down the URL of that website already. Very good. Um, and so um, that is the uh, basically the professional body for professional photographers in Australia. So, um, you know, our courses are credited by the AIPP. Uh, we also um, really encourage all of our students. And in some of the courses, you have to apply to the AIPP to some of their competitions. Um, one of our students recently just won the uh, Student of the Year prize. I think we had three students in the top five or something for the Student of the Year prize. So a really amazing kind of achievement. And so we have a really strong that's, Oh, sorry. That's right. I was just going to quickly add in um, our students that were in like finalists for the student of the year, they weren't even at the end of the course. Like a lot of them were at the beginning of their PSC journey as well, which yeah. is amazing. That's right. They were first years or second years. That's right. Yeah. And so um, I guess that, you know, that's one of the really important kind of connections we have and uh, you know, we, we really support the AIPP and we go to a lot of their events, but we also promote a lot of their kind of uh, competition and stuff through the college. So it's a really great way to kind of uh, start to engage with some photography competitions and to get out there. But also the great thing about the AIPP is that a lot of professional photographers, wedding photographers, events photographers, sports photographers, that sort of area of photography, they're all part of the AIPP. So of course, if you start entering those competitions, they start seeing your name, they're looking for an assistant, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So, you know, you can build careers that way too. So lots of kind of networks are kind of made in that sense. Um, the other one I wanted to show you also was the uh, Melbourne Fashion Week. Um, there was no Melbourne Fashion Week uh, this year, obviously because of COVID-19, um, but uh, Melbourne Fashion Week is, a, uh, is an amazing event and it's a huge kind of international event. And we're a partner every year with Oh gosh, I'm not sure where I've gone here with the website. And um, we're a partner every year with the Melbourne Fashion Week in terms of not only do we have students um, going to the events and photographing the events of the Melbourne Fashion Week and actually getting a, uh, a press pass to go in and do the runway photographs for the Fashion Week. Um, but we also uh, run events alongside the Fashion Week. So you'll see, for example, I just spotted it before. There it is. Um, so last year we ran an exhibition um, that we organised of student and graduate work of fashion photography that ran as part of the Melbourne Fashion Week uh, program. So a huge festival opened by the Lord Mayor, I think it was. And then we had a partnership with a, we have a partnership with a Japanese uh, fashion and photography school. And so some of the students and the work from that school in Japan also traveled to Melbourne. And we had that as part of the exhibition and we had some people, some students and some staff from the Japanese school come um, and we're, hopefully going to send some students to Japan as well once COVID-19 disappears, hopefully. Um, so that's, that's a really big part of our kind of um, networking as well in terms of not only kind of professional bodies, but also organisations and events that are happening in, in photography in Australia. One of the other ones of those which I mentioned briefly is uh, Photo 2021, which is a, uh, a big photography festival that's coming in February next year. Um, and like I said, I'm curating one of the exhibitions for that festival. Um, but there's also a number of staff and students that are involved um, in that festival. Hoda Afshar, for example, this is her work, one of our staff members. Um, a number of other staff and students are involved in that um, festival as well. Um, and so I guess in terms of those kind of um, partnerships and events and things, not only is it part of the, uh, you know, the kind of community, if you like, but also during those things, we're also taking students to go to see those shows, to have talks by the artists, to meet the curators. Because we have those links with those places, we're able to kind of get you in and get you to meet the right people and, and meet the curators and meet the artists, et cetera, et cetera. Um, uh, what else was I gonna show? I think that was kind of it in terms of the links. Um, what about question? CCP? Oh yeah, CCP. There you go. I've got that up too. Um, so the Centre for Contemporary Photography, if you don't know it, it's the one of the main kind of photography galleries in Melbourne. So it's located in Fitzroy. Um, and so basically the CCP and then there's also the Monash Gallery of Art, which is out in Wheelers Hill. So they're the two kind of main photography galleries. 
Uh, and the CCP, again, we partner with often, um, we have lots of staff who are involved in the, in the gallery in terms of being on the advisory board and those sorts of things, but also exhibiting work there. But we also have our end of year graduate show um, at the CCP every year as well. So a major event last year in November, when we had the show, we had about 5,000 people through the exhibition during the time it was on. Um, and lots again of industry kind of professionals coming through and lots of students making contacts through that kind of event uh, as well. Um, I'll just stop sharing. A, th a few of the other things that we do, for example, is we have say, um, am I back now? Yeah. Yeah. Um, one of the things that we have also is that we have kind of partnerships with places um, like uh, The Age, for example. So a lot of our staff um, um, shoot for The Age. So we have a good partnership with The Age and we have often have um, um, people from The Age coming to do talks, but also we have student placements, et cetera, et cetera, that have happened in the past through The Age. Um, we've done projects collaboratively with The Big Issue, with Parks Victoria, with RACV magazine. We also have a really good connection with a lot of the top modern modeling agencies in Melbourne. So our commercial and fashion photography students um, are put in touch with um, new models that have signed up to modeling agencies. And so basically we do this, what's called uh, FTP, if I think I'm right with the acronyms. And basically CFP. what it- CFP, sorry. Um, time, for print. time for prints. There you go. Yeah. And so what it means is that um, basically the modeling agencies are taking on new models all the time. And obviously our students need to photograph models. And so they, uh, the students then propose, a, you know, a kind of a shoot and they talk about the theme and they show them the kind of ideas and the modeling agency then kind of um, vetoes that and says, yeah, that's fine. And then they all send uh, models to the college to, for the students to shoot. And so then the, the photographers then provide the agency with the work. And out of that, we've had lots of students who've had their work featured on the modeling agency website um, and their work then kind of getting out there into the wider kind of world. Um, we also have some good partnerships with some of the major kind of brands. So in our studio, for example, we have Profoto, Bron Color um, gear in the, in the studio and have a really good partnership with, with, with those organizations. And they'll often come in and do talks for us and workshops, etc. And also with Canon and Nikon as well. Same, um, we'll often run competitions with Canon and Nikon. We'll have representatives coming in and do talks and do workshops for us. Um, so we're kind of you know, there's lots of different things that are happening at different levels of the course, which are connecting you to the, kind of to the industry, really. And I'll also just quickly add, like, there's maybe 60 people in each year level of the bachelor. So it's not like you're competing with, you know, 300 other students in your year level alone. Like, there are this many opportunities for a small cohort of students. And so it really becomes um, quite collaborative and, you know, the opportunities are there for you to grab, really. Awesome. Well, Dan, you were telling me that you had some, you know, students, you've been here for a long time. Um, some of our student success stories and, um, you know, what our current or what our graduates are up to now. So is there anyone that you want to highlight to the group? Uh, yes, there is. Awesome. <laughs> what a coincidence. Um, yeah, so I guess I've got a few people and I'll, I'll, I'll maybe talk about two or three of them, but I might mm. just touch on a few of the others as well. But I guess in terms of um, just thinking about the kind of range of different photographers that we kind of produce, like I said, in the third year of the course, uh, the first two years in the Bachelor are the same for everybody. You do the same units um, through the first two years. And then the third year, then you specialise in either commercial, photojournalism or art. And depending on which one you choose, then you actually have different kind of units that sit alongside your kind of major. But also you're working with the people from that area. So you're working with people who are interested in commercial photography and fashion and, and that area, or you're working with people who are doing photojournalism and multimedia, or you're working with people who are artists and doing art major. So it starts to get broken up a bit in the third year and you start to have much more, even though we have lots of one-to-one -one kind of time throughout the course, you have a lot of time to kind of spend one-to-one -one with your teachers in really developing your kind of folio in that area. Um, so, uh, yeah. so uh, Rochelle Hansen um, is one of our students from a few years ago and I can't remember when she graduated, sorry. Um, um, but 
she um, has really been active since she left the college and um, has been running a number of um, tours and travel tours. So what she, she fell in love with that kind of um, Nepal um, uh, area, the country, um, and doing treks and those sorts of things. And so what she does is she runs um, tours in that area. So she'll have a group of um, amateur photographers and she'll take them on a two or three week tour of Nepal and they'll go through various places and photograph and she's been there a number of times and make connections with different communities and she'll take groups of people through those areas and um, teach them photography skills in terms of landscape and portraiture and documentary and um, but also giving them a kind of a cultural experience too. Um, so I'm not going to go through too much um, uh, too much stuff but um, I can just show you quickly um, yeah so you'll see for example that she's got um, she's been various places um, I think she spent some time on a residency in Iceland recently as well. Um, so I'm just going to scroll through. But um, she's been really active in a variety of different areas. And I think what's been great about Rochelle is that she, in a way, discovered her passion for travel and for meeting people and photographing through the course. And then she's been able to turn that into a business. You know, and she spends a lot of time traveling, spends time in Melbourne, obviously, at the moment, um, but spends a lot of time traveling. And so she's able to kind of bring together her passion for photography and also make it into uh, her, her income as well, if you like, you know? So that's what we're really kind of, you know, that's really kind of a fantastic kind of story of bringing together the thing you're passionate about and actually working out a way for that to be the thing that also sustains you in your, you know, financially as well. Um, the other photographer I was gonna show uh, was, um, was, uh, Morgan Hancock. So Morgan was a uh, graduate from about three years ago or so um, and did the photojournalism major and was very interested in working in, in editorial photography. And his third year project was a kind of a six month um, or even longer project around a local football team. And he basically just followed this local football team around for the whole season. And he did this beautiful kind of documentary piece from start to finish and season start to the season end about this one team and about the kind of relationship between the blokes in this team and the ups and downs and the failures and the successes and the blood and sweat and tears and the missing teeth and all that sort of stuff. Um, and so it was a really fantastic kind of project. And so then quite naturally, um, he moved into kind of working in kind of sports, but really soon out of graduating from the course, he got a job as a newspaper photographer working for a regional newspaper. So he does that as well as freelancing for a number of different um, photo agencies doing sports photography, et cetera, et cetera. So you can see that um, he's doing a variety of things and he's also photographing events. He's doing commercial work. Um, but really, again, turned his passion for sport into, um, turned his passion for sport and his passion for photography into something together to make a career in photography, if you like. Um, and was really kind of dedicated to that through the whole of the third year and making it part of his, um, you know, making it part of his folio so that he could then go out with this really kind of tight project and show people, show that he could tell stories, show that he could engage different communities of people and show that he could actually be there and get the right shot at the right moment as well. So, um, yeah, he's doing, he's doing really well. Um, I guess on the other hand, there's someone like um, James Bug. So, which is a very different story. So James Bug um, was working much more in kind of longer form documentary kind of style work. And this is a project he did um, called The Pines, uh, which was his third year project, which is, uh, remind me where The Pines is, Whitney, it's somewhere in kind of near, maybe near Frankston or somewhere, a kind of a regional kind of city. Frank Frankston. Yeah. Near Frankston, there you go. And it's an area near where James grew up. Um, and so he spent the whole year kind of doing a you know, documentary project about this place that, you know, that he's sort of talked about being a, you know, a place with, that has lots of socioeconomic kind of challenges um, and photographing the community there and, and really working closely with the community and meeting people. Um, and this photograph actually, which is on the front cover of his website, um, as part of the third year, not only do we push people to apply for things like the AIP, AIPP competitions, but also a range of other photography competitions across Australia, but also uh, internationally. Um, and there's one which is called the Moran Photography Prize, which is an Australian prize, and it's the richest photography prize in the country. It's a $50,000 first prize. Um, and James won that prize with this image, which is a portrait of a guy in, in the Pines. So this was his third year project. And 
literally like a month after he graduated, he got a $50,000 check for winning this prize, you know? Um, so really fantastic. And this was a, a, a actually it was a project he started in the second year, actually, um, and made a kind of photo book out of it for the second year. That there's a project in the second year where you have to make a photo book. And then he continued it through into the third year and then made another photo book at the end of his third year. Um, and that book, I think, was also shortlisted for the Australian Photo Book of the Year Prize. And then this image also won that Moran um, Contemporary Photography Prize. So um, there's other people that I could talk about, but I guess those three people are kind of quite different in terms of what they do. But we have then people like um, Cassandra Zortoglu, Georgia Glue, um, who's a wedding photographer and commercial photographer. And she runs her own business called Blossom Daisy Creative, which is a nice fluffy flowery name um, and she does weddings and commercial works and again she's been super successful since she finished she started her own business has really been working hard as an entrepreneur um, and yeah has lots of uh, well obviously this year has been a bit tricky um, but has been photographing and has become a really sought after wedding photographer and again she graduated only four or five of years ago as well so you can see there's lots of different kind of um, avenues and different kind of outlets for people in terms of where they can go with their photography um, yeah, I might just leave it there. I think I can keep going with lots of different other stories, but um, maybe we can share these links with, with the people as well. I can, I can, we can always follow up afterwards and send you some links of different examples of students' work, you know? Um, yeah, I mean, we could spend the rest of the session just talking about, you know, all of our students and all of the success stories. Um, and I mean, they're just the students who finished and went into photography. Um, I think one of the other really good things about the Bachelor of Photography is that, you know, although photography is the main subject or the main topic of your degree, you're also learning a lot of skills that will transfer into other industries. We like in the second year, we introduce you to um, a lot of video work. So you start learning how to produce videos. I think one of the assignments is a music video. Um, and then like Dan mentioned before, there's a whole photo book subject. So we actually have a workshop where you're physically making a photo book, but you're also learning the design side of things. Um, I'm not sure if they still do, but we had to print in CMYK. So there's also learning about the different printing um, types. So CMYK and RGB. And so we have a lot of students who go into printing as well. Yeah, I guess, look, in terms of the photography industry, um, there are, you know, there are these kind of opportunities to go out and work, you know, and to create your own kind of company and to make work and to work for publications. And we have lots of students who will go out and work for, say, studios. So, you know, there's lots of photography studios around Melbourne or in Sydney or Australia. Um, and, you know, they employ photographers and technicians and all those things as well. But apart from that, you're also, you know, learning skills that are to do with working in collaboration with people, problem solving, um, also managing people and managing projects and managing timetables and managing teams. Um, and, you know, we have a lot of students who will go out, for example, and will get work, um, say, assisting as a photographer, but also working in a gallery, but also working for... Uh, an online publication editing text and editing images, but also doing retouching for photographers, but also, you know, there's multiple skills that people can have editing videos, you know, the multiple skills that you come out of this, of course, with. And what happens generally is that in the first year or two out of the course, students are doing lots of different things and they're kind of testing out the waters in all these different areas that they can work in. And then whatever, whatever seems to kind of rise to the surface and that what they're better at actually kind of comes to the surface and they start to work in that area more and more and more. Um, and, you know, I think, you know, there's, there's a real focus in the course in that ability for students to come out and, you know, often what will happen is you'll be on set at a shoot, for example, and someone will say, oh, we need to do this. Does anyone know how to do this with the lights? And, you know, if you're a PSC student, hopefully you're like, yes, I've done that. So you do that. And then they say, actually, we've got this publication that we need someone to just tweak the InDesign file for us. Does anyone know how to use InDesign? Yes, I can use InDesign. Okay, great. Now we need to do a behind the scenes video. Can someone light and shoot this video for us? Yes, I can do that. You know, and I've got, we're doing this website and the text on it's a load of crap. Can someone edit this text for us? Yes, I can edit the text for you. All those things that you need to be able to do as a photographer, um, we're kind of teaching you. So hopefully what happens is you come out and you can say yes to all of those things that employers need you to do. 
And then what happens is that means that then like Farley, for example, then people say, oh, you know, that she was really great. She was able to do this. She was able to do that. She actually, I didn't have to employ three different people to do this one job. She could do all of them. Let's get her back. You know, that sort of stuff. So that's where the course is kind of positioned, really. It's about giving you the kind of best opportunity to get out there and actually make an impact and get, and get work, you know? Nicely said. Is that, is that what you were going to say, Winnie? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you took the words right out of my mouth. <laughs> Um, okay, so maybe, um, I know there's only a few of you here, but um, maybe do you guys have any questions for us, seeing as we're here on a Wednesday afternoon? You may know our Bachelor of Photography applications are now open. So Dan was just speaking to Holly earlier today. Um, and so we're taking um, applications directly through our website and also through VTAC. So what we're able to do, because we know that this year has been um, an unusual year, to say the least, is we're trying to make the process as easy as possible for you guys. So what happens is once you apply, I will call you, we'll have a chat, and we're able to then book you in to an interview with either Dan or Serena. And once you have your interview, you can then receive a, um, a letter of offer within 48 hours of your interview. So if you're applying directly, it means, yep, you have a spot. We just need a way to make sure that you've finished um, year 12. Or if you've applied through VTAC, it's us saying that also, yes, you have a spot and we want to offer you a place once the VTAC rounds um, go out I think which is in January so process is very simple um, none of us are really intimidating people and we're quite passionate about photography so your interview is really just a chat about your work and your passions and your interests and um, you know we'll throw things in like oh you should check out this photographer they're doing a similar thing and um, you know it's really just us getting to know you a little bit more um, but I'll quickly pop in the chat a link to our bachelor page so that um, you can find out more about the course and it also has the course guide on there as well for you to download. Um, but I think that's it from us, unless anyone has any other burning questions. But it was lovely. I hope to see you guys around soon and um, see you at next Wednesday's or next, yeah, the next Wednesday workshop.